Hello and God bless you. I appreciate you taking time to fellowship with me. I chose Facebook Live because I have a quite a number of you who, who, who know me in the Central Florida area. And there's so many of you that need to hear what I'm about to talk about. I mean, we all have many, many concerns, but first of all, I want to say thank you for showing up. Thank you for noticing that I'm going to be live right now. I didn't advertise this. I didn't really make it known like a public event. I just know that the Spirit of the Lord has been on me every day, and the Spirit of the Lord has been strong. The anointing has been strong. God has been putting things on my heart, and I know that many of us have need of answers. Some of you are, are confused because of what's going on. Some of you are so excited. Yeah, a new president is coming in and he is repenting. He's, he, he, he's going to uh, change things. And, and some people are very upset about it. You know, everybody's got different opinions. You know, I saw the, the news talk about the two egos right after he won. And I, I instantly felt from the Lord that there was going to be a division among us in America. The two eagles representing America and the, the fact that they were fighting and then they got caught and they almost both went down a drain. They, they were caught in a drain. They were caught in trouble. And a house divided doesn't stand, folks. We know this. And there's going to be division because... That's the way we are. We, we don't know how to get along. A lot of us don't know how to get along, even in the house of the Lord. And shame on us. But I want to welcome you who are tuning in right now. Some of you, you've never heard me, and some of you know me very well. And I love you guys, and I love the Lord. And every time I come on, when I come on, it's going to be for our education. Because I love you. has put so much on my heart that I can't hold back anymore. I can't hold back. Do you know that I love the Lord? Do, do you know that I love the worship of the Lord? Do you know that God's put it on my heart that some of you need to be seeking the Lord more? Well, the Lord knows what's going to happen. And I'm going to encourage you to be right with the Lord. Be right with Almighty God. Seek His face. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. I promise. God bless you all that are tuning in. And you're making comments. I see you all and I love you all. God bless you all. You know, but this is serious. How many of you, you know, you've been part of a ministry. You've been part of a body. And some of you are not. You know, but we all have some form of belief, some form of religion. Uh, but here's what's important, more important than any other time. More, this is the most important thing. I need you to be honest with yourself. I need you to be honest with yourself. I need you to take this serious, what I'm about to say. Lives depend on it. Our nation depends on it. There's going to be this big celebration. Donald Trump's going to make a speech. And I'm not here because of politics. I'm here because the nation of America and the people within it. There's a lot that's going to take place in a few days. There are plans in place. And I want you to understand, you are not to relax. You are not to relax. 
A matter of fact, I pray that you're praying every day. Some of you are fasting and praying. Some of you are doing what you're supposed to do. Praise God if you're seeking the Lord. Praise God if you're seeking His face. Praise God if you're putting God first. And praise God if you're taking inventory and you're looking at the situation and saying, wow, I need to really work on some areas in my life. See, before we criticize everyone and the nations and, and this person and that person, we have to get the beam out of our own eye and ask God, God, search my heart, search my soul, search me, O oh Lord, and renew a right spirit. See, David knew how to be perfect, and yet he was a murderer. David knew how to get right with the Lord. He bent the left knee, the right knee, and he repented, word we don't hear much of today. I didn't come with a prepared speech. I came to plead with you to pray, to examine yourself, and to join me in making sure that we're going forward with God, not without Him, forward with God. That's what we got to do, go forward with God, folks. Will you join me? in prayer. Will you join me in commitment and making a difference, walking in integrity? See, your name means something. Whether you like it or not, you're going to give a testimony. Someone's going to talk good about you. Someone's going to talk bad about you. It all depends on how you live your life. You are important. Your name is important. What you do is important because it's going to be a testimony of how Either God is first in your life or he's not. And friend, if you're struggling, you've been struggling, and maybe you said this year is going to be different. And it can be. It can be. All you have to do is be real with God and tell him the truth that I need some help. I remember praying to God, God, give me a hate for what you hate. Give me a love for what you love. Give me a heart after you, God. And praying it often. Praying it often because I mean business. I really want it to be right with God. See, a lot of people want to have this gift of salvation, but they don't understand that to have a peace, to have a joy that overflows, only comes when you have a right relationship with the Lord. See, sin carries a weight call guilt, call shame, and you don't feel too good about it. I would love for you to get together with me. We can have Bible study. We can talk. We can reason together. You know what I love doing when we have a congregation together? And right now, I'm just, you know, waiting for my family to come home. I'm talking to you from my home in Florida. And I, I just wanted to share with you that we are going to be coming on live almost every day because it's critical that we start right. It's critical that we get right. It's critical that we put God first. God has to be first. And that means making some changes in our life. That means really, really uh, praying and being honest. You know what I like to tell people is to take a test. Take a test. And the test is called the love test. When you go to Corinthians and you open up the word of God. Now, in Romans chapter 8, we often quote it. We often talk about there is now therefore no condemnation to them who are in. Christ Jesus and we love that that there's no condemnation when we have a right relationship with God I want you to have a right relationship with the Lord I want you to really consider this year being right with the Lord I want you to consider this year surrendering fresh every day I want to ask you are you on fire for God and if not why why are you not having revival in your own personal life? I'm not here to put you down. I'm here to lift you up, brother. I'm here to help your sister. I'm here to help your pastors. Those of you 
that felt relaxed and feel like nothing's happening. Maybe you are a leader in a church yourself and you're saying, man, I just can't get anything to happen. Now is the season where the Spirit of God is moving. There's an awakening taking place. Many of us are tapping into it. Many of us are asleep, need to wake up and see that the Lord is good. See, the Lord is full of mercy. He's long-suffering. And He wants to see a restoration take place. He wants to see America healed. But it depends on the decisions we make, how we behave, what we do. If we're going to act just like regular folks fighting amongst one another, just like the Corinthian church did, there was division, there wasn't no unity. Well, guess what? Things go wrong. Divisions, fighting, instead of saying, you know what, we got to come together, we got to reason on these things. And it's not hard. Number one, love. Where are you with the ability to love? Or is it all about you? Some people get offended so quick because. What about my needs? What about what I need? What about what I'm praying for? And you got your list and you're going to God. God, you know, I'll commit to you, but I need some help. I need this. I need that. I need, you know what? And you're coming to God with the wrong heart. Like he owes you. And he does owe you. He owes you death. We all should be dead for all the mistakes we've done in our life. Living the way we've lived. Some of us say, oh, I, I'm not a killer. I'm not a murderer. I'm not in that group. Yeah, but if you rejected God and you haven't accepted the gift of salvation, His Son, Jesus Christ, you're still part of the wages of sin. And, and the payday is death. But I'm here to tell you, revival, authentic awakening of people who are dead spiritually, I was having a conversation with a friend. He said, I hate that word, revival. Well, let me tell you, Jesus was the first one to spot the zombies, the dead people walking. He used it like this. He said, let the dead bury the dead. Oh, friends, there's so much more than religion. If you would tap into God, there's so much more. I, I want to tell you, you can have more. You can have more, hallelujah. You can have more, but do you want it? <laughs> do you want more, hallelujah? Do you want more, hallelujah?
to pray to the Lord. You have to seek His face. You have to be willing to turn from your wicked ways. I it sounds hard, but it isn't. God knows what's best. God knows what's best for you, for me. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be free. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I praise your holy name. Yeah. Oh, God, you're worthy. You're worthy, Lord, to be praised. How many of you want to go deeper? How many of you want to draw closer to the Lord? How many of you want to experience an awakening of fire? A fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire from the Lord. Hallelujah. Fresh fire from the Lord. Fresh fire from the Lord. Fresh fire from the Lord. Fresh fire, oh Lord. Fresh fire, Lord. Oh, we praise your name, God. We praise your holy and wonderful name, Lord. We praise you, God, because you're worthy to be praised. Take us deeper. Yes, Lord, I want to go deeper with you in my relationship, God. I just don't want to be a carnal Christian, Lord. I pray, God, that you make a way out of no way. See, some of you have been struggling all your life. You've been going to church, but you, you haven't experienced that breakthrough. See, you need more. God and less of you. Do you understand? More of God and less of you. See, we have to learn to die daily. It's not just words. The kingdom of God is spirit. The kingdom of God is love, joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is alive and well, but you can't find him in the flesh. King self, King I needs to die. Do you really want joy? Do you really want experience, God? Do you really want to experience a breakthrough? Do you really want to experience what God has for you this year, this moment? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's okay to praise Him. Why don't you praise Him right where you're at, right now? Won't you praise Him? Won't you praise Him? Are you not accustomed to saying, Lord, I'm hungry for you? When's the last time you've been hungry for the Lord? When's the last time you told God, I want more? Yes. More. More love. More power. More of you. Do you want more? Do you want more, really? so great. 
grateful that I can call upon the Lord, that I can seek His face, that I can turn from my wicked ways, yes, and that I can seek Him daily and say, God, I need more of you, I need help, I can't do it on my own, and you can't, in the flesh, in the flesh you cannot please the Lord. You cannot please God. You cannot please the King of Kings. You have to learn to surrender. You have to learn to surrender.
Hides my lips Here I am of love and he says come unto me come unto me with your burden come unto me with your struggle come unto me come unto me and I will give you rest will give you rest. Oh, that sounds so good. I know some of you are tired of the burden. You're tired.
See, I'm praying right now. God's been allowing an anointing to flow, and I can feel His presence. And He's letting me know that somewhere, groups of people are going to get together. And we're going to seek His face, just like in the book of Acts. It ain't going to be about a worship service and then all of a sudden the music stops. It's going to be about seeking God and spending time with the King of Kings. See, God came to save us from sin. Not put a band-aid on it and say, it's okay, keep it in the closet. Nobody will ever know. No, He came to deliver you. He came to set you free. Oh, there's some of you that right now you're saying, I want to be set free right now. And I'm going to tell you, this is all you got to do. Even right now, you can take a moment. As the music stops, don't let your heart stop and motion stop. Pray right now with me. God, I want you to take over my life. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm so sorry, Lord, and mean it. And turn from that pattern. Say, I'm not going to walk no longer in that way. Do you know why that's important? Do you understand why that's important right this minute? Because you want to start fresh with the Lord. And the only way to do that is to come clean. I'm not telling you to advertise it. Definitely don't put it on Facebook. <laughs> but tell the Lord, I know you're big enough to handle my biggest sin. Yes. God loves you. He really does. All you have to do is pray. God, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I want to accept you as Lord and Savior. I want to accept the sacrifice that you made on the cross. I want to accept you, O oh Lord, my God. Accept you, O oh Lord, my God. So, if you're praying that right now, and you've meant it in your heart, do you know that the blood of Christ applies to you right now? Do you know that right now there's a party going on in heaven because you asked the Lord into your life? See, that's all it's about, folks. It's getting right with the Lord. Jesus loves you. And He made a way for you to have a new beginning. To have a new beginning in the name of Jesus. To have a new beginning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. why this year is going to be different there's going to be those of us that don't go with the flow there's going to be those of us that made a commitment to the Lord we're going to let the Holy Spirit have his way Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. We 
give you all the honor and the glory, the privilege to praise your name, the privilege, God, to call on you, that even wherever we are at, at our different locations, that we can praise your name. That we can call upon the name of the Lord. See, there is no distance. Remember the story of the soldier, the spirit, and the soldier who had a sick servant at home. And Jesus was going to go and heal. But the man said, no, I'm not worthy for you to come to my house. But he said, just say the word. Say the word and it'll be done. I believe it. Now I'm paraphrasing. But the bottom line is, the man had great faith. And Jesus said, I have not seen in Israel such great faith. Let me ask you right now, where's your level of faith? Where's your level of belief and trust? Does it need to grow? Does it need to be saturated with fresh anointing? Yes, Lord, pour down right now. As those are watching right now, they're seeking you, Lord. And right now there are people tuning in and saying, Yes, yes, I want more, Lord. I want more, Lord. More of you, God. More of you, God. And that's why we're going to have revival. See, the Holy Spirit is moving. And some of you want it. Some of you want it. Some of you are hungry. Some of you are saying, Oh Lord, here I am. Here I am. Take me, Lord. And if you're authentic, you will feel the rush of the mighty wind of God. If you're authentic, you will feel God right now. Oh yes, Lord. Trust in the Lord your God. 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 Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me in to the Holy of Holies. Take the clothes, cleanse my lips. See, some of you, you went to the holy place. You took this time serious. But I need to talk to you about something serious. Right now, we as a nation, we need to pray. For unity. For brotherhood. We need to pray and come together that's not going to accomplish anything but let us reason together and will you understand there's something bigger at stake if we divide this nation will be in trouble God is giving you an opportunity to be a part of the solution not part of the problem but you have to believe. You have to have faith in the Lord. And you have to seek His face and turn from your wicked ways. Why won't you put your trust in the Lord? I know some of you, you're still in love with your sin. But today could be a day that God delivers you. Or 
already there's angels rejoicing as people have given their life to the Lord. has put on my heart with the music off and with your attention on the Lord has put on my heart that we are going to see some crazy things happening here in the U.S. people are not going to come together but it's up to you to not be a part of the problem it's up to you to be a part of the solution and you must get in a state of prayer you have to pray I mean every day you have to be prayed up See, when you read Romans 8 and you hear God talk about no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, it continues to say that walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. As you continue to read, you hear God say that in the flesh you cannot please God. Did you hear that? In the flesh you cannot please God. God. So what are we supposed to do? Well, when you become in Christ, you are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. See, 2 Corinthians 5.17 talks about being made new. How? When you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you become a new creature. You cannot put new wine into old wineskins, folks. You can't come to Christ and hold on to all your stuff, your, your burdens, your sin. See, sin equals death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So Christ came to break hold of the sin, to erase it with the blood of his own sacrifice. God loved you that much. You know the scriptures, you've heard it before, but some of you are still playing with fire. This is a time where you're going to see a shaking in the U.S. and people will tremble with fear because violence has increased. The word of God has said wickedness would increase in the last days. And so as we see wickedness increasing, we're going to see love grow cold. But there is those of us that are trying to find those that have a heart and are hungry for God. Because see, God is the rewarder of them. And seek them diligently. Did you hear the word diligently? Uh, do you really want a breakthrough in your life? Don't you say one measly prayer and think everything's going to be okay? Show God that you mean business. Show God that you're hungry. Show God that you want Him more than anything. You should. He created you. He allowed you to be born. That was a miracle in itself. The earth was formed. He created us. And, and, and don't get caught up on, on the commandments. Those commandments keep you alive, brother. Those commandments keep you out of trouble, sister. Those commandments will help you walk the walk and live in purity. Because as you obey the voice of the Lord, you hear Him saying, These are the ones who love me because they keep my word. They keep my commandments. That's evidence that we're grateful for our salvation. We're not working our way to heaven. We're saying thank you God for saving me and in return God I will follow you. Do you follow Jesus? Will you follow Jesus? Will you commit to the Lord? I'm asking you don't participate in these protests. Don't go to these places. I promise you you don't want to be there. I want you to pray. I want you to pray. I want you to pray and intercede for protection for our leader in office. The only way that this country is going to see change is if the saints of God follow up with prayer. If the saints of God don't follow up with prayer, you will not get the breakthrough in our nation. If the saints of God don't really seek the Lord and really seek his face, they will not see the breakthrough. You can have a new president, but we still need a people 
to back him up, to pray for him. See, one thing you don't realize is there's a work going on with Mr. Trump. You don't realize that there's God's hand in this. You don't realize that God can take the worst person and make him right for the purpose at hand. Moses didn't want to deliver. Joshua wasn't thinking of fighting the battles of Jericho. But you know what? God appointed certain people and used them. And all that training and all that experience that Donald Trump has, God can use it for his glory. And did you know there are men and women of God praying for the president, counseling him, helping him. <clears throat> he ain't on his own. Don't judge him because of his past, because a lot of times the future is what, what we got to look at so that you can notice the change. Number one, notice he ain't accepting the salary. Number two, notice that he's allowing the ceremony to be a faith-based ceremony, a Christian ceremony. He is trying to show you all that he's changing. Yes, we all have a past. We've all, especially us men, have lusted after women and done things we shouldn't have do. But some, t some point in time we grow up and we find a good woman. And the Bible says, oh, her price is far above rubies. Hallelujah. Far above rubies. So I'm asking you to pray like never before. Seek the face of God. Be a part of the awakening, the revival spirit, the fire. Because... Here's what's going to happen. A lot of us are going to get together in a place. God's got appointed people that I'm meeting. And we're coming together for a purpose. To pray. To seek God. To worship. And a lot of the unknown people who are not in the spotlight. And you know what? It needs to be that way. Because the Bible talks about the last shall be first. The first shall be last. And there is some people that are in the spotlight. And they are abusing the position of God. They are abusing the free will offerings that are coming in. How many of you are frustrated with what you see in America? Three million homeless people all over the nation. It's crazy at any given time. And then on paper they try to tell you it ain't that bad. Friends, I'm out there in the trenches with the homeless. But God has given me a word that in the last days we need to seek the Lord, walk right with the Lord, do not be deceived. Do you know what the number one problem is going to be in the end times? Deception. More people are going to be deceived by false teachers, false prophets, false churches, false ministries than any other time in history. Jesus prophesied this. The apostles prophesied this, and yet people just blindly go to any church, blindly accept anything that sounds good, looks good, the chairs are comfortable, oh my God, get a grip, check out the doctrine, are they preaching the word of God? Don't be critical, go there and worship the Lord. We're not supposed to forsake the assembly, but what I'm telling you is what you hang around, you become like. So if you hang around lukewarm Christians, guess what? You become lukewarm. And this is not the day for lukewarmness. We need the fire of God. We need the anointing. And if you want to participate in that and be filled with the Spirit, guess what? You better crucify King Self. Tell them to get off the throne and let God drive. So you should be the co-pilot, not God. Too many of you want to be in charge of your life instead of letting God lead you into truth. When God is in the driver's seat, everything will work out. All things will work together for your good. If you love God, if you put your trust in God, and I'm telling you, what we need to do is come together, worship together. I'm looking for a body of people that want to come together. And we're going to pray. We're going to seek his face. And we're going to continue to seek his face as God is cleansing us, revealing to us things. And guess what? I 
believe there's fresh fire falling. The Holy Ghost is available right now. Fresh fire is falling. And you're going to see a move of God like never before. You're going to see real miracles and manifestations. Yes, limbs grow back. Yes, but these are going to be people who are not afraid to pray day and night. Not afraid to meditate upon the Word of God day and night. We have lazy Christians today. Lazy. I have to examine myself. The one talking to you has to examine himself and say, you know what? I need to open up my Bible more. I need to get on my knees more. I need to get out of my bed more. I, I need to get right because I don't want to miss the flight. I want to be right with the Lord. So I'm asking you to do the same. Will you join me in a commitment to be authentic? And then online we can fellowship like this. Um, this ain't going to be the only way we fellowship. I'm going to have some special tools coming soon, hopefully, and people helping me where we can get together in a building and pray, seek his face, break bread. But right now, if you want to come over to my place, if you're in the Central Florida area and you want to come fellowship with me, you get in touch with me. I'll let you know a day and time that we're having the next group study. And we can get together in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, starting in February, we will be having studies right here. And I'm looking forward to those of you that want to get together. Okay? I want you to pray about February. Because that month, love is going out to the community. Love is going out to the streets. Love is coming out to you. Online, offline. Wherever the Lord opens doors and pastors, please, let's get me over there. and Let's get that congregation on fire. Do you have, are you having trouble with your church? Are you in the area and you need someone to speak life? Brother, I will come and help you. Sister, I will come and help your ministry. But you got to give me a call. You got to give me a call. Let me know what's going on. I'll, I'll put my number in the comments when I'm done here. I'll send you links to my website, www.chainsoffministries.org. Get in touch with me, and, and let's get together. I'll come down to your church. You know, you provide a way for me to get down there, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that congregation out into the streets, out witnessing for souls. See, the harvest is ready. We need to be doing something. The most common thing I have going out there People asking me if you had a church, Pastor, I would come. But you got to be real with the people. They they can spot hypocrites and they've experienced such hurt. Well, anyway, I've said what I wanted to say tonight. Pray, because there's going to be a lot of riots, a lot of problems going on. This is just the beginning of a transition. Donald's got his work cut out for him. But if the saints of God don't back up America... Uh, it's only going to get worse. So I'm asking you, don't let that happen. The ball is in your court. We as people have a responsibility to pray, seek God, and don't be a part of the problem. Please help others when you see them getting angry to say that's not the answer. Please help people when they're needing encouragement. Please love on them. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and take that love test. Are you kind to others? Start being kind. Start being patient. Start being an encourager. Help the body in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for everyone who tuned in for this time. And I just want to ask, Lord, that you bless them, Lord. That you would, you know, let this word sink in and let them understand that we can worship and we can seek your face and we can turn from our wicked ways and that you can heal our land. You can. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. And thank you so much, God, that you are with us. That you are with us, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, we pray. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I praise your name.
God bless you. Have a great day. In Jesus' name.